So if you would do me, if you would do me great honor, would you stand up as I bring my baby girl up? <laughs> Queen, Queen, Queen Mia, Queen Mia, Queen Mia, Queen Mia. Oh, next Saturday, come next Saturday, she would um, graduate from Wake Forest with her, with her degree in divinity. Never give up on your children. You may not have been the best mom, but you've been good moms. Very good moms. And I want to thank you in this church. I looked at everyone up here when you was up there talking about that, different ones in the Bible. I want to say to you in this church, if you're a single mom, if you're a widow, if you're a widow now, if you are just a mom, thank you. I watch you carefully every Sunday, every Wednesday, regardless of what takes place on this campus. You are here. And you know, I, I cried not because it's just my day, it's because it's all of you women's Mother's Day. You are great women of God. You are great women of God. You have everything inside of you that God said that you have inside of you. If you are born again, you got every attribute that God has. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up yourself on yourself. Love yourself. Don't wait too late to love yourself. See the ability inside of you. And I want to thank you again, Mia. When Bishop asked me who did I want to speak, I said, well, I tell you who I want you to Excuse me. I tell you who I want you to speak is my daughter. <laughs> and to see the kind of woman she has turned out to be, the mother and my daughter, my baby girl. She's still our baby girl regardless. She calls our house and what y'all doing? I said, what you want to, do you want us to tell you what we are doing? <laughs> and she calls me and she looks after me and sometimes she thinks she's my mom. And you know what? It's good to have a daughter that can speak into your life. And so she has helped me to frame my life in many different ways. So again, my pookie, my, <laughs> my baby. <laughs> Let's give Lady Joyce a hand. You may be seated. Do I need to give you this, Daquan? That's good, okay. This morning, before we get started in our sermon, I'd like to give a few shout outs. Y'all like shout outs? Yeah. I do too. This morning, I would like to give a few shout outs before we begin. The first shout out and expression of gratitude is to Mother God. As truly as God is Father, as truly as God is Father, as truly as God is Mother, and for that we are grateful. Amen. Two Jewish women, Naomi Jonet and Maggie Wani, composed a Sabbath prayer for their community that expresses the motherhood of God and it states, Blessed is she who spoke and the world became. Blessed is she. Blessed is she who in the beginning gave birth. Blessed is she who says and performs. Blessed is she who declares and fulfills. Blessed is she who lives forever and exists eternally. Blessed is she who redeems and saves. Blessed is her name. So today we bless you, Mother God, and we are eternally grateful for your divine presence. We love you. Our second shout out this morning is to all the angels who have transitioned before us. We send light and love to you this morning. We call the names of our dear mothers, grandmothers, aunties, sister friends who have transitioned and paved the way. I welcome you to close your eyes and I invite you to call out your loved ones whose names Call out their names who have transitioned on. God, I call out Virginia Murphy. I call out Mildred Hash. 
I call out Dolores Hash. I call out Delilah Miller. I call out Cecilia Murphy. I call out Georgia Murphy. I call out all the ancestors who have paved the way and whose names I do not know. And for this I say thank you. I call out Kiri Lee. I thank you. Call out your mother's name. Take this time. Call it out. They paved the way. God of heaven and earth, we thank you for these dear loved ones and the great cloud of witnesses that they have become for our journey. Amen. Our third shout out goes out to the real MVP, Lady Joyce Hash. Yes. Who is it? <clears throat> She's our dear mother. She's the Mima to her grandkids. She's the mother of this illustrious house. And we love you and we adore you. Before we go on, me and my siblings have a few shout outs that we would like to grace you with this Mother's Day. Shout out to a wonderful and beautiful mother, the mother that we love with all of our hearts. Shout out to how impeccably clean you had all of your children and grandchildren. Shout out to all the Vaseline that you put on our faces, making us shine as bright as a light bulb. Saints, you must know that Lady Joyce required a clean face. Shout out to all the times that you hit us in the head with a comb and brush while you were doing our hair. Amen. Shout out for smacking us in our mouths with that same comb and brush. Shout out for the cooked apples, the homemade potatoes and biscuits that you made most weekends for us. Shout out to the bomb homemade apple turnovers that you made. Oh, this one right here. Shout out for making us take baths and scrubbing our elbows with Ajax. <laughs> Literally, she did. Didn't she? <laughs> Those elbows are too black. Shout out when we were kids and you would put your finger over our nose, over your nose, telling us that our breath stunk while we were in church. <laughs> I do the same thing to my kids now. <laughs> Woo. Shout out to mama for making us vacuum every day and requiring vacuum lines in the carpet before you got home. Every day, literally every day. Shout out for always making sure that your kids wear the best dress. Shout out to the mother who loves and cares for her family like she does. You are always concerned with the well-being of your husband, children, and grandchildren, and this church. And for that, we are eternally grateful, Lady Joyce. Our last and final shout out goes out to all the mamas, grandmas, big mamas, aunties, any woman, regardless of having biological children or not. These women are the ones who poured into our lives. They love, nurtured, and care for God's creation. And shout outs go out to all of you. These women are the women who held us down. They held down our families, churches, neighborhoods, and communities. They were the big mamas, the aunties, the god mamas, the play mamas, and the list goes on. These are the women who sat on the front porch in the church pews. They walked the neighborhood. Wherever our trifling behinds were, these women are the ones who always managed to show up on time. And for that, we say thank you. You corrected us and taught us to act like we got some sense. We thank you for all the times that you pulled money out of your bras or pantyhose to give us a few dollars and cents to get us some candy or snacks, amen? We 
thank you for always managing to save a little extra money hidden in a cookie jar or under the mattress. How many of y'all know about that? They'll say, go out the room for a minute. <laughs> This is my favorite one right here. Shout out to all the mamas that fuss, cuss, and pray in one breath because she is sick and tired of everybody and they are getting on her last nerve. But then five minutes later, she's telling everybody that she loves them. <laughs> Can I get an amen? To each of you women, we say thank you and happy Mother's Day. You all helped us to become and because of you, we are. Let's stand and give all of these mamas a hand. Amen. Give yourself a hand. Let us close our eyes as we pray. Mother God, we thank you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You are our God, our Redeemer. We thank you this day. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit that has filled this room. We thank you for breaking every chain. We thank you for every shackle that is broken in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you this day, and we all shall say, amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I will never forget one day when my kids were much smaller, I was over my grandmother's house and my kids were running all over the place and getting on my last nerve. I said, oh, they're getting on my last nerves. My grandmother, uh, she, she started laughing and she said, oh baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Right now your kids are on your toes, wait until they get on your heart. Now I know what my grandmother means. My kids, my siblings, children, kids in the church and community are always on my heart. I know what it feels like to have the heart of a mother. She is one who prays for others day and night. To have this heart of a mother does not require you to biologically have children. It only requires you to respond to the God matters that God places on a mother's heart. Today, as we celebrate, as we relish in all of our victories and commemorations of motherhood, as we should, it is vital and necessary as women in the land to understand that our work is not done. I'm going to say that. Our work is not done. Many of you, I don't know the ages of your children, they may vary, but just because your kids may be 18 and older and may be out the house, mothers, your work is not done. Today, my prayer is that quietly tucked in our hearts are prayers of awakening that jolt us into a consciousness of the disparities and deficiencies that we are facing, that are facing our children, homes, churches, and communities. Today, I was strongly compelled to place a clarion call before the women of the community as we celebrate this beautiful day. And that's why I stress this conversation that I'm getting ready to have, it does not require you to have biological children. I'm speaking to any woman that is a woman. The God work of a mother is never done. Regardless of the age of children or assignments that we have been called to, our work is not done. This God work extends beyond the domestication glorification that we normally highlight from the proverbial 31 woman each Mother's Day. It was funny when they were quoting the um, Proverbs 31 woman, they said her words are always kind. I was like, well, Lord, <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> but yet I'm a virtuous woman. <laughs> this God work is deep justice, liberative work. It is a God work that continues generation to generation. 
Often we hear and have intense discourse about the epidemic in our communities and the absence of fathers not being present in the home and the traumatization of this impact. Nonetheless, I herald and applaud all of the women who champion the cause of motherhood. I stress and repeat, the notion of motherhood extends beyond a woman having children or not. Motherhood, like fatherhood, is a choice. Look at your neighborhood and say, motherhood, motherhood. like fatherhood, like is a choice. Having biological children or not does not qualify a, a woman to be a mother. To be a mother is to choose to nurture and love God's creation. Amen. Loved ones, my heart is troubled and concerned. Women are deciding not to be mothers any longer at an alarming rate, which results to us being a motherless society. This discernment that I speak of today has nothing to do with women bearing children, but everything to do with the divine position that God has called women to be present in this earth. I have witnessed women at an all-time high refuse to continue to do the God work of motherhood. Again, I'm not speaking of the choice of having children or not. I'm speaking of the outright refusal to be the nurturers of love that God called us to be in this earth. There is much in this earth to be loved, sustained, and grown, and these efforts are normally extended through the loving arms of a woman. However, we have women of all ages refusing this mantle. They refute their own growth. This lack of growth concerns me and leaves me to interrogate, how do we expect our children, homes and communities and societies to grow when growth is primarily, not solely through the arms of a woman? As a woman, I am concerned. I am concerned about the present lack of holistic growth and identity for women. You may ask, what is a lack of holistic growth and identity for women? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is any woman who refuses to yield or mature to the natural progression of womanhood, spirit, soul, and body. I think I'm gonna say that one more time. It is any woman who refuses to yield or mature to the natural progression of womanhood, spirit, soul, and body. And meaning, I want to break that down a little bit. We talk about it so much. Fathers ain't in the home. That's the issue. That's the issue. Daddies ain't in the home. Get it. Got it. But equally, right now in this dispensation in 2018, we are equally seeing some of the issues that we have because of a motherless society. And as I said, that has nothing to do with women choosing to biologically have children or not, but it has everything to do with women making a decision not to carry the mantle of motherhood. In turn, we're having traumatizing effects on children, homes, communities, and societies. Today, we have cases where mothers are remaining as girls versus progressing into full-grown women. I'm going to say that again. Today, we have cases where mothers are remaining as girls versus progressing into full-grown women. We now have little girls, guys as women, attempting to lead themselves, homes, and community. Again, I'm going to say that because I wanted to get in. We have little girls disguised as women, attempting to lead themselves, homes, and communities. We have women and children. We have women with children and no children turning their backs on the mantle that God has clearly called women to champion and lead. Women, we can no longer turn our heads to the mantle of motherhood and think that issues of today are not our problem. To turn our backs on those that need us is an immature thing. This very immaturity is impacting us in great measures. As a result, wisdom has departed in times that is most needed. This matter is not a matter of blame, but one to call women into understanding that our work is not done. Look at your neighbor and say, our work is not done. 
God situated women to be an ever-flowing presence of grace and wisdom in this earth. Therefore, my sisters, it is time for us to grow up and be the Sophia wisdom that we have been called to be. We cannot continue to rob Peter to pay Paul, meaning we cannot continue to rob God, ourselves, loved ones, and communities that are waiting on our full expression of God. Whatever is in the way of us being the women that God has called us to be must strategically and carefully be dealt with. Your soul is a del delicate matter, women. We must do what Dr. Katie Cannon says, do the work that our souls must have. My sisters, this is not a matter to shame us. This is a divine calling and reclamation for us to return to our divine selves. And for that reason, I call us into radical healing. So when Lady Joyce called me a queen, I oblige, amen? As you should too, because that is a reclamation of your divine selves. I call us into radical healing. We must do the necessary work that is impeding us from coming into our full expression of Sophia wisdom. Sophia wisdom is the mere expression of God's divinity flowing through women. Women exude and possess a divine wisdom from on high that is all powerful. It saves worlds, births and sustains civilizations. It is a divine wisdom that calls children and loved ones into holiness. It is a wisdom that cries aloud and protects from seen and unseen dangers. Amen? How many of you women exercise that wisdom? I know I do. I tell my husband, I tell my children, I've seen and unforeseen dangers. But it takes tapping into the source of Jesus to do that. This woman of divine wisdom is what God needs for our homes, our families, churches, and communities. This God work requires us to be a real woman, not a little girl. We have life awaiting our divine wisdom. So this leads me to my topic of today's sermon. Will the mothers, will the real mothers please arise? That's right. Will the real mothers please arise? Amen. That's right. So it be. You may have a seat. Our text today comes out of the song of Deborah, so you were so in the spirit, Sister Felicia, that comes out of the book of Judges. In Judges 5, 6 through 8, from the Message Bible, it reads, I don't know if they put it up, in the time of Shamgar, son of Anath, and in the time of Jael, public roads were abandoned. Travelers went by back roads. Warriors became fat and sloppy. No fight left in them. But then you, Deborah, rose up. You got up a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders who then fought at the gates and not a shield or spear to be seen among the 40 companies of Israel. The Deborah song was a song of celebration. This song arose from a desolate place from the people of God. God's people were in perilous times. How many of y'all can see we in some perilous times? We witness a woman arise as a mother to a turbulent community. Deborah was a mother, she was a prophetess, she was a judge and a political leader to a fragile Israel. In this narrative, we witness Deborah make a divine choice. She chose to be more than what her leadership required her to be. She made a divine choice to be a mother to a motherless community. Israel was accustomed to male leadership, which is great. But in and during this perilous time, this people needed a mother. There are only some and specific things that a mother can do. This woman mothered an oppressed people. She was a voice of consolation during dark and oppressive times, much like the dark and wicked oppression that we witness many of our communities plagued with today. Amen? They were under oppressive, imperialistic rule and was amidst hardships and crisis that caused great struggle. They were in a time of transition and uncertainty. Can't you feel the uncertainty in our air? Can't you feel the uncertainty in our nation? They remained in a position by which they had yet possessed the land of Canaan. 
That was the land of Canaan, Canaan that was promised to them generations ago under Moses' leadership. This generation of Israelites were the descendants of those who were a part of the Exodus slavery that Moses led by which their grandparents and parents were a part of. This was a new generation under harsh rule and they forsook much of the struggle that their ancestors went through. This new generation did not know what to do. But they had a mother who did. How many of us see our children? How many of us see situations that they just don't know what to do? Mothers, you possess the wisdom to set your children, to set communities, to set churches, to set ch uh, civilizations on their way. Thank you, Jesus. Deborah did not turn her back on her people or refuse to be the mother that God needed her to be to this fragile nation. This generation's revolutionary leader, Joshua, was now dead. Joshua was gone. And now they became fragile and vulnerable to no leadership. Being without an established leader was risky business for Israel. Israel. Israel went through several judges or leaders. However, under the appointed powerful political leadership of Mother Deborah, they were able to defeat the oppressive Canaanite leadership. That's why I said what I said about uh, Proverbs 31. She is great. However, there are some of us who represent a Deborah. And it's okay. Identify where you need to identify. I know for myself for years, I'm not a very, well, I do what I have to do, but I'm not an overly domestic girl. Y'all can put that where you want it. I do what I have to do, but in the same sense, I know my strength. This defeat came through divine wisdom and counsel of Mother Deborah. The all-wise mother would sit under a palm tree and teach the Torah, the law. People would come from the neighborhoods, from the community, and would sit under her tree and get wisdom from this powerful woman. She arose as a mother for her people. She arose as a stage of wisdom for the general Barak, who consulted her for political insight and wisdom. Her wisdom was so divine to the place that Barak would not wage into war without her going. Deborah, the mother of Israel, parallels the same wisdom and strength of women of yesterday and a remnant that remains today. Women who are life-given sources in most oppressive times. Women, we must continue this God work and arise to the occasion. Some are doing this mothering work, but today I am calling all women who are willing to make the choice to be a mother into the fold. We have a church full of women that I pray deep in my heart will make the choice to be a mother. We have a generation just like this generation that is discussed in this text. A generation where the old generation has died off. We all know that we had parents and grandparents that went through very turbulent times. They were descendants of post-antebellum or post-slavery. They were descendants of the Re Re Reconstruction Era, Jim Crow, the Great Depression, World Wars, and then Civil Rights. This new generation, just like, just like the, that generation of Israel, is not in full possession of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the struggle that got them from where they are today. I'm here to tell you today, this is where this generation needs a mother. Yeah. Mothers possess a wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what was then and what is now. And she is able to tell that story to a generation who needs it. Yeah. These are the women that generations cry aloud for. Women whose hearts are open to their families and communities as they come seeking to sit under our palm trees to receive divine wisdom, knowledge, and counsel. As mothers in the land, we should have people coming to sit on our front porches, 
on our back porches, in our offices, at the foot of our bed. They should Skype us. They should FaceTime us. Do whatever they need to do to get the counsel that they need. We all should have a palm tree by which this generation can come and possess understanding of who and what God is yesterday, today, and forevermore. We have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, families just as the Israelites who are in the valley of making great decisions in their life and it is pivotal that we are clear of our issues, mothers, to offer and provide Sophia wisdom to set them in their course in life. I'm going to repeat that. It is vital and important that we are clear of our issues. I can stop right there and preach a whole sermon. It's vital, mothers, women, that we are clear of our issues to offer and provide Sophia wisdom to set them on their course. Do you understand what you have in you as a woman? Do you understand you can change the whole trajectory of your whole family? Those children that you're worried about, those family members that you're worried about, this nation that you're worried about, you contain the Sophia wisdom inside of you. But many of us have too many issues for it to be released. This is the divine wisdom that Deborah offered to Barak as he came and sat under the palm tree. That in turn resulted him being the deliverer of Israel. Deborah's advice was the one that set Barak up to be the deliverer of Israel. Mothers, we never know where our Sophia wisdom may land somebody. You never know where your wisdom may land somebody. I'm not suggesting that we should solely shoulder the burdens of our community. I'm not, we are not to shoulder this burden alone. Too many women have done that far too long and that resulted and wielded in death. No, this is not the clarion call that I'm calling us to, but I am calling us to return to our rightful divine place. For this reason, I call us into radical self-care and healing. Women, by the authority of Jesus Christ, right now, I call you into radical self-care and healing. Mothers, women of Sophia, Women of Sophia, do the work that your soul must have. Only you know, or at least you should know what you're dealing with. Do the work that your soul must have. Do the work that your soul must have. Do whatever it takes to keep you whole, including dismissing yourself from systems, people, places and things that are a threat to your overall well-being. Some things we just gotta pray for the grace to tolerate, but as soon as you can, get out. We are too divine to be dealing with that kind of mess. It is impossible for us to be to others what we cannot be for ourselves. As women, when we practice this type of care for ourselves, it yields the increase in capacity to be the mothers that God needs us to be for ourselves and those that we are assigned to. For this is the place of radical self-care and healing. It provides the capacity for maternal divine grace, maternal love, and maternal wisdom that will empower us to arise as mothers in the midst of situations that are most needed. We witness women of capacity through the life of Mother Deborah, our mothers, grandmothers, aunties, and the list goes on. These women had capacity. We have generations behind us that needs us. They need whole healed mothers. They need whole healed women. We need the capacity to contain every part of this generation that lies ahead of us. Much of what we dislike about our children or this generation are more than likely things that we have yet to resolve within ourselves. 
I'm going to say that one more time. Much of what we dislike about our children or this generation are more than likely things that we have yet to resolve about ourselves. Ha <laughs> ha. Mothers, I want to speak directly to you in this moment. When we come to peace with ourselves, we will not be moved when our children come under the palm tree to reveal hidden identities. We won't be moved when they come under the palm tree to talk about hidden resentments and fears. When we practice our divine self-care and healing, we can arise in these turbulent situations and provide offer and offer Sophia wisdom that is needed. Mothers, I ask you today, if you have children or situations that you are not in agreement with, call them today. I know that this is Mother's Day and they should call you, but women of God, we have the power to make the first step. Come to peace with your children. We can't go lead the whole world and mess in our own homes. Make peace. It is at hand. Life is too short for us to hold on to the deep-seated wicked issues that we have allowed to come in between us and our children. In closing, it would have been increasingly difficult for mother Deborah to be the judge, leader, and mother amidst a turbulent nation that needed her Sophia wisdom. It would have been difficult for her to lead her people to deliverance and liberation if she was a woman of deep conflict within herself. A woman of deep conflict within herself, God, and others. So women, our lives needs for us to be free. Our lives need for us to be fierce. Our lives need for us to be fiery. Our lives need for us to be bold. Our lives need for us to be spirit-filled as we stand representing many. In my final words, today I leave you with a quote from Dr. Maya Angelou. I come as one, I stand as 10,000. Women of God, you come as one, but you stand as 10,000. Many await you. God, you, your children, churches, communities, nations await for a mother to arise, and that woman is you. Will the real mothers please arise? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I do believe in the power of agreement. I ask you ladies to please take the hand of another lady. Our strength is ready to fill this room as we pray for one another. God has called us into radical self-care and radical healing. Pray for your sister and I just thank you as we close our eyes. Mother God, we call upon you right now. God, divine creator, I ask you to blow, I ask you to breathe through my sisters. I ask you to breathe through these women. I ask you to breathe through these mothers who are biological mothers and those who are not, but yet they are still mothers. I ask you, Lord, to let them arise. Let them arise like Mother Deborah, Lord, that they may rule and that they may speak and provide wisdom for nations, for civilizations, Jesus, for families, for communities. There are many things, Lord. There are many desolate people who are in corners in life, who know no way out. But this right now, Lord, under the sound of my voice, there are women in this room who possess the Sophia wisdom. They possess it, Lord, and not only do they possess it, they say yes. They say yes to being the mother, to being the mother that you've called them to be. You've called them to be a mother to nations. You've called them to be a mother to civilizations. You may have called them to be a mother to their, to their nieces and to their nephews, whichever it may be. Open up the eyes of their understanding, Jesus, and show them, show them the places that you need them to be a mother. Lord, I thank you and I praise you that you have empowered these women to say yes. Lord, the hurts and the fears that they may have any generational trauma that may lock them up in their heart. 
and keep them from saying yes. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to bring radical healing. I call upon radical healing by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to touch my sisters right now. I thank you, Lord. Heal the hearts. Heal the hearts of women, Lord. Heal the hearts of women who haven't forgiven themselves. Heal the hearts of women who may not feel that they were the adequate mother. Heal the hearts of mothers who may carry guilt about who and what they are. Heal their hearts. God, I ask you also to do a radical healing in this house that we are not petty, immature women. We are not women who destroy the vine. We are not the women who destroy each other, but we are women who uphold each other. We pray for each other. I thank you, Lord, that you have empowered us to rid ourselves of all of our issues, God. But we thank you and we praise you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you into that radical healing, into that radical transformation. I thank you that this is a community that will keep everyone accountable. We are a community that we care for each other. We are a community that loves each other. We are a community that nurtures each other. And I thank you, Jesus. We release... We release the express divinity. We release it, Lord. We release it. Motherhood is a choice. Motherhood is a choice. Just because you biologically has a, have a child does not always, that that qualifies you to be a mother. Motherhood is a choice. Mother's nurture, mother's love. We make a choice to nurture, to nurture ourselves, to nurture our homes, to nurture our children, to nurture one another. We thank you, Lord. And in this we pray and we all shall say, amen. Give your sisters a radical hug. ability that they brought you into this world. And let's thank my daughter Mia one more time. I told you she would be a treat. I couldn't think of anyone I wanted to do it anymore than I wanted my daughter to do it. And she did a fantastic job. Thank you, Mia. But you might have a seat. We're going to do this very quickly so you can go to your lunch and spend time with your mom. But I want to ask everyone in this ministry and by the sound of my voice, if you have a mother that is living, please.